Yo, what is up guys? It is your host Seiji Shamra here and welcome back to the channel. I'm here to bring you another part to What If Naruto Had Zero's Powers Part 4. Thank you all so much for your support on the last video. I'm very grateful for you guys for just, you know, being there to support me. And honestly, I hope you guys will continue to do so in my future videos. For those who are new to the channel, I hello, I'm Seiji Samurai, and I post every single day of, of the week. And the weekends are usually my break. Don't go ahead and start questioning why I'm posting this video on the week. I mean, well, on the weekend. Uh, this mostly due to the fact that I did not post at all during spring break because of unfortunate issues. So, yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, just letting you know. But besides that, guys, uh, thank you all so much for your support. Hopefully, you guys will enjoy this what if. And hopefully, I would have enough energy to complete one last one right before uh, I have to go on another trip. <laughs> uh, man, I'm never going to be able to get the schedule done if this continues happening. Either way, guys, I'm keep trying my best for y'all. And either way, enough of me blabbling about whatever's happening to me. Let's focus on you guys and the content you deserve. So let's get started with this. Hope y'all do enjoy and let's begin. You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough There's a million other people with the same stuff You really think you're different, man, you must be kidding Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it It's impossible, it's not probable, you're irresponsible Too many obstacles, you gotta stop it, yo You gotta take it slow, you can't be a pro Don't waste your time no more Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? Alright guys, let's begin with this part of the what if We're now flashing forward to the next day As at this point in time, Kakashi had, be, had actually announced to the team That he was signing them up on the tuning exams we will see the rest of them as they sit by, as Naruto honestly personally did not care about this. However, he could already realize that there could be a lot of chances here. Considering the fact that the tuning exam is coming from different villages, from, you know, from Suna, this could actually end up helping him, you know, getting information from other villages. Oh, this actually caused him to actually feel at peace with himself. That's what's very interesting. As after announcing this, Kakashi would of course vanish to do whatever he wanted, as, Kaka as of course seeing this, Sasuke would just walk off with Sakura asking him on a date, to which he of course refuses. As for Naruto, he begins walking away, not at all caring, as yeah, he honestly just didn't care about this. Now we now flash forward to when Asa, um, oh my, I was about to say Asa, when Naruto ends up arriving at his workplace, his laboratory. As soon as Asa arrives in Ah, I said Asta again. As soon as Naruto arrives at his home, he ends up locking the, the door due to seals. As all, I don't, I'm sorry, guys. I, I, I'm scatterbrained right now. It's really late, and you guys are gonna see me make pretty much more mistakes than I usually do. Which I know, I know. It's, I'm surprised. I'm surprised too. I make more mistakes. But yeah, uh, just, just bear with me on this one. Just, just follow along with the story. So anyway, Naruto ends up, you know, he ends up actually exceeding in going farther levels with seals. Due to him being here, he ends up studying it more and more, and this caused him to actually be much more of a seal master. And Naruto has been actually abusing this knowledge as he's been completely just tapping into different seals, all the way to the point where he's literally thinking about tampering with space and time itself. However, as Naruto was thinking this though, he would then be cut off as this one suddenly an executor blade would then be sent flying towards him as this one Naruto would then catch it with the two fingers. You know, I don't like objects being thrown around in my laboratory. You know that, right? Naruto would say as he looks directly at Zabuza, who is calmly there with his executioner blade being thrown. <laughs> I was just testing you out, Zabuza would say as he would look at Naruto with an amused expression underneath his mask. As Naruto rolled his eyes, this is when suddenly Haku would end up arriving, as he would also put down some tea, welcoming, welcoming Naruto back. Now you guys are probably asking, what the heck is going on? Why are these guys being so friendly? But well, we're now moving towards a flashback. Naruto, during his time, he was experimenting with a lot of stuff as he returned back to the Hidden Leaf Village after conquering the Land of the Waves. He was tinkering about, but the main focus that he was doing right now was trying to complete Haku and Zabuza. Just a little bit more, Naruto would think, as he begins to work on them after a few moments, as eventually after working on them quite enough, he would finally been have it. Two demons. At this, Naruto would give a smile as he would actually see both of the books that he created, one of them being titled The Demon Hidden in the Mist. However, there was another one created. This book was to represent Haku's demon. And by the way, guys, I did go ahead, I did check out the comments of the last video, which you guys don't know, I do read my comments. And uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this guy's name right, but Hein, like dollar sign Hein, thank you so much for the name. 
as the name for Haku in this one will be the Cold Death. As as Naruto would hold both of these books, he would then put them down with an interesting look. All right, now then, let's begin. At this, Naruto would then suddenly begin to his eyes would then glow a reddish aura as a purplish aura would then erupt from him. At this, this when suddenly the books would then transform as appearing right in front of him in flesh and bone itself. We would see Zabuza and Haku. As if you guys want a reference, think of it when they were brought back by the reanimation jutsu. Except they don't have any cracks. Like they're just they just look like they used to, except for the fact that, well, they look slightly demonic as their eyes are glowing red. As this is when Zabuza and Haku wouldn't open their eyes, he, Zabuza would be confused as well as Haku. H Haku? Zabuza would say. At this Haku would look at Zabuza surprised, seeing that his master was still alive and that he was actually seeing him now. But did did you die? At this, both of them were confused. But then Zabuza would then turn to Naruto, who was just there watching the display, as he also had he also brought out a notebook and some pen too. Interesting, he would say, as he begins to write down information. Zabuza seeing this would then get angry as on um, pure will itself, he would then suddenly emerge with the executioner blade as he swings it at Naruto. At this, Naruto would actually watch the attack incoming. However, he ends up catching it with he actually ends up stopping it with one finger a la a la, a la Aizen style at this he ends up looking at Zabuza interesting even more at this with a simple push this when the executioner blade would then be pushed off causing Zabuza to be pushed back a little bit this would cause Haku to show hostility as well however this one Zabuza wouldn't stop Haku wait a minute you did something right he would say at this Naruto would then give him a smile you are correct. At this, this is when suddenly we will then begin to get the explanation. Naruto would give him the whole rundown of the situation, about his death, and exactly what he did to them. Hearing these words, after everything was said, both Haku and Zabuza, both Haku and Zabuza said nothing until Zabuza would then suddenly look at Naruto with, a, with his red glowing demonic eyes as he will, be in, he will be begin to release a bunch of bloodlust. So what, you thought just because you can bring me back to life, I follow your orders now? I'm your servant? He would say. At this, Naruto would look at him. First things first. Watch your tone. At this, this one suddenly, the feeling of death would then begin to re literally leak out of Naruto, causing Zabuza and Haku to gasp for air, as they couldn't even breathe in the presence of Naruto. He, he's death itself, Haku would think. As she would look at the man in front of, in front of him, as he couldn't believe that such a man even existed. At this, Naruto begins to walk towards Zabuza, as, his, as he was now, at this point, kneeling down to Naruto, as after that, the pressure would then be released. At this, Naruto would then suddenly bow, you know, bend down to Zabuza's level, as Zabuza was still on the ground, panting. I personally have n no care at all. The only reason why I brought you back was because you hold information, plus you are extremely useful. However, if you do not want to exist anymore, just say the word. I will do it, and you can go on and continue living on with the fact that you died, and you couldn't help your village. Hearing these words, this would surprise Zabuza, as he glares, just what do you know, he would say. At this, Naruto then began to whisper into his ear, everything. At this, hearing these words, Naruto was not over-exaggerating. After all, he had to literally tear apart Everything of Zabuza, going through his memories and everything, just to write down the book. So due to this, Naruto was of course able to go through the memories as well, and he was able to see everything. And this caused Zabuza to tense up. At this, seeing this, Naruto would then look at them, he would then say, You now got two options. Death, or you work for me. It's honestly your choice. At this, Zabuza can do nothing more but watch, until finally, he agrees to it. Now, before some of you guys start asking, like, Yo, you know, why, why did, how come he gave Zabuza, like, an option of just death and everything? It's because, legit, Zabuza is literally considered a dead shinobi. And if he just appears out of nowhere, like, of course, please, someone like Kakashi is going to figure it out. Because, like, bro, this man was literally had Shidori through his chest. Like, you can't just walk that off. You can't. And before you guys start saying, Naruto's a different breed, okay? <laughs> he was a different breed. He had the nine tails. Don't compare. Don't compare Zabuza to him, okay? So due to this, Naruto only had those two options. So at this point, Zabuza was of course sweating. 
as this is when he finally opens his mouth and releases the answer. Now, the agreements to them, I'm not going to go fully into disclosing it because it really does not make that much of a point. But pretty much, Zabuza would now actually be able to be working for Naruto, or at least until Naruto was eventually able to let them be revealed in the future. After all, just because, like I said, Naruto, he is extremely smart. So he's going to be able to figure out a way, some way, somehow. And besides, once he gets his piece, he honestly has no need for the rest of them. So as we now turn to the canon right now, we would then turn you would then see Naruto as he turns to Zabuza. At this he ends up giving he ends up throwing back Zabuza's executioner blade. However, this one suddenly Zabuza would then give a smile as this when the blade would actually begin to get emerge as he literally merges with Zabuza completely as it just disappears. At this this was one of the abilities that Naruto had given to Zabuza. His ability to literally bring out the Executioner Blade. So think of it as a, as if it's pretty much him. Think of it like how in Bleach, like they're able to bring out their Zanpak toes. Yeah, that was a sort of able to do something like that. He's just bringing it out like on command. As for as for, as for another thing though, due to his abilities as well as the amp of having the demonic powers of a demon, that was a lot stronger than he was in canon, and. Well, I mean, obviously, you should expect that the very same thing with Haku. As after that being said, this is when Naruto then gives them their very first mission. With this, he tells them that with their new powers, he wants in more information on, on you know, the the Blood Mist Village, and he tells them that he wants them to go over there and start trying to assist them. What? Zabuza would say. So you're telling me, but you just told me. As he tries to explain, this is when Naruto then cuts him off. Yes, I understand the circumstances. However, since you are going over there, you can go ahead and share the information. I would like to make some negotiations with the current Kage. After all, if this works out, it could be both very ben very beneficial for me as well as for you, he would say. Naruto was now in business mode, and he had a lot of things to do right now. Especially since the fact that Naruto had gotten a large portion of Gato's money, as well as a bunch of his own connections, Naruto's got a lot of work on hand, and he could just think about all the materials he can get in the future. Oh, just interested in Naruto a lot. Hearing these words, though, Haku and Zabuza, they did feel some gratitude towards Naruto, as they get, even though you can say as like you know Naruto's being cold-blooded and everything, at the same time he's giving them another chance to fight for their village. The very same village that he ran away from and tried to assist when he was far away. So seeing and you know giving them this opportunity, Zabuza and Haku will both bow at Naruto, thanking him as they will then suddenly end up banishing away, using their their new demonic strength as well as abilities. Seeing that they were gone now, Naruto will then begin to continue working in, as we now also turn to the outside. At this Haruzen was currently now pacing back and forth as he was trying to think. Why? why? Why can't I get a read? He would think. At this point, Haruzen had been extremely worried for Naruto. At this, he was not sure why, but Naruto, after the whole encounter with the Jinjiriki, which, yeah, he saw the whole encounter with it, he's, he was kind of worried for Naruto, as he thought that the Tail Beast was taking over. So he tried, you know, spying on Naruto. However, that's the weird thing. His crystal cannot spy on Naruto when he's at home. It was... It was weird and overall disturbing. At this, he had actually had sneakily sent an Anbu to check out Naruto's house, and while well, when he was away, of course. And when the Anbu reported back, he ended up explaining that there was a bunch of seals there, and that each one of them were too complex for even he to read. This was a surprise for Ruzen as he realized that Naruto was actually taking up one jutsu. However, he didn't know exactly how deep Naruto was at it. And honestly, there this was this was where Haruzen begins to realize that Naruto had so many. Like, he, there were so many things he didn't really know about the boy. He was calm, he was cool, collected, but that was as far as it goes. And this worried Haruzen. So, due to this, Haruzen was trying to think of a plan or something. However, he realized that he had other thoughts right now as well. As he did realize that the tuning exams were coming up and he really needed to focus on it to make sure everything went well. So, due to this, he ends up ordering some ombuds to scope out the area and prepare for tomorrow's exams. As this is where we're now going to move to the present. I mean, wait, no, sorry. This is where we're now going to move forward as we will see all the teams now gathering up as Team 7 would eventually end up meeting. 
Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto would all enter inside the building. As this is where we, as soon as they enter, they will then see a ruckus going on. As we will see the fake tuning, sorry, I mean fake Genin, was currently, you know, intimidating all of them, saying that, you know, all of them should get away and that, you know, this is not for them. As Naruto would look at this, he would scoff. And not Genjutsu, an incredibly low one at that. Well, not even worth it. At this, Naruto begins to make his way through the crowd as his presence completely disappears as, as, if, as if he was not even there. At this, Naruto would be, you know, of course, manipulating his own energy with this one, using his magic. But this one suddenly Sasuke's voice would then set in as he begins to sort of showboat it, explaining, like, you know, how they notice it, as this one Sakura would also give her own opinion. At this, Naruto was too busy not caring to really listen to the conversation of these guys. As after a while of walking, he, up, he would actually end up arriving at the exam room way quicker than any of his teammates, or heck, even the first team that was there. As soon as he ends up arriving, he will see Kakashi leaning on the door. Oh, hello, Naruto. You're early, Naruto would say as he looks at Kakashi. At this, Kakashi ends up chuckling a little bit as he then says, Well, I guess since you're the only one here, but this is when Naruto would then cut him off. No, my other teammates are there, although Sasuke is planning on showboating everything. At this, Kakashi would, of course, let out a chuckle with a sweat drop. Jesus, kid. Show some personality, at least. I mean, seriously, dude, I see more emotion on a wet sponge than you, he would think. As also, I mean, sorry, Naruto's face was completely expressionless, as he would then suddenly pull out a scroll and begin reading. And this, Kakashi would sigh as he begins to read his Icha Icha Paradise. As while doing this, eventually, we end up, which we're going to do a time skip once again, we eventually see, you know, Sasuke and Sakura end up approaching, as Sasuke had actually been limping a little bit, as well as shown sights that he had fought. At this, Naruto would look up from his scrolls. This is when Sakura would scream. Naruto, where were you? We, you? How could you abandon us like this? As she begins to scream, though, this is when Naruto would once again give her a look. And this caused Sakura to actually, you know, reel back as she then sets into reality. As Naruto's presence alone just shot away her entire fangirl attitude. As, like, it's pretty much just her mocking death right in front of her. Like, you, you're honestly stupid for that one, buddy. So due to this, after shutting up and everything, Kakashi would give them one last, you know, encouragement as he tells them all to get, like, you know, to do a good job. To which each one of them would nod as this one we're now beginning to enter the first part of the tuning exams. Now, the first part of the exams is honestly going to get skipped over here. Naruto is a genius, way smarter than Sakura. So, of course, he's going to be able to save this, like, solve this like it was nothing. No need to cheat at all. However, I do want to say one thing. And it was the encounter between Naruto and Kabuto, as I believe in this timeline, things are going to go way more juicy, if, I, if you know what I mean. Now, Kabuto would be approaching the group as Naruto would be similar to Shino, which is just pretty much hiding their presence and, you know, hiding in the background. As this one suddenly, when Kabuto begins to speak up, Sasuke's voice would then set in. I want information on Gara. as yes, Sasuke does eventually end up countering Gara, but we're continuing on. And I also would like information on Naruto Uzumaki. At this, everyone would now like look at Sasuke. However, he was not the only one. He was not the only one who was interested in this, as uh, the team in Suna, that being Tamari, Konkuro, and heck, even Gar were interested in this one. As this is when Kabuto would then smirk. Well then, let's see this Naruto Uzumaki. At this, he pulls out a slip. He pulls out, you know, a card as he prepares to search through the information. However, right before he could, though, he would then suddenly begin to feel a presence on him. I, I, I can't move, Kabuto would think. At this, he felt it. He felt it. Gravity was against him right here, right now. As if it was almost as if it was freezing him from even moving. At this, he wondered what was causing this. A paralysis? A genjutsu? No, it made no sense. At this, Kabuto was thinking... He was thinking this at such a rapid speed that he didn't realize that, you know, everyone there was just looking at this man. As he was completely just, you know, he, was, he looked like he was, like, not moving at all. Hey, is, is this guy good? Like, he would ask as he was looking at this man confused. However, as Kabuto was having, like, a mental breakdown right now, as no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't move. He wouldn't suddenly meet the eyes of Naruto. Now, let me just say this. The way that Naruto and Kabuto's eyes just met at that moment, Kabuto saw... His life flashed before his eyes. However, unlike the rest of, like, you know, regular killing intent, this one was much worse. As honestly, this shook Kabuto to his core. 
Now, when people's life flash before their eyes, it's typically just like, you know, memories of everything they went through and everything. But the Kabutos was different. As in each one of the flashes, Naruto would be shown as he was always there right behind him. Kabuto would be shaken. As if, it was as if Naruto was deaf itself waiting for Kabuto as he grew older and older and closer and closer to death. As he would be right there, no happiness at all, just there with a the blank, hollow expression. As soon as it was done, Kabuto would then be suddenly released as he felt as if gravity was lifted from him. As weak on the knees, he would fall down to the ground and breathe heavily. Just, just who was this? I, I have to report this to Lord Orochimaru, he would think. As of, out of everyone here, even the even this Jinjiriki of the of the Shikaku right now, Kabuto showed so much fear of Naruto, as he had no idea what power it was. But this boy, no, he couldn't even call it Naruto boy. He was something demonic for sure. As Kabuto was thinking of this, he realized that he needed to report this to Orochimaru ASAP. However, right before he could really do anything, this is when, of course, he would then be attacked by the Sound Ninja as they try to make a display. And after that, the rest of the canon continues on. So, of course, after that very incident, like, and due to this very incident, no one got information on Naruto. However, Garo, who had been the one who's been able to sense negative emotion, he was terrified. Like, he legit sensed Naruto just leaking out this oozy energy that no one else was able to sense but Kabuto and him. And although it was only a small bit of it, Gara was honestly shaken up as all he could think that all he can think about is that he must stay away from Naruto Uzumaki at all costs. As he was not even obeying his mother's orders on that one. It was his pure instincts alone just screaming at him that he needs to run away from a monster. So moving on, we end up eventually arriving at the forest of death as Ankh would then burst into the room making a generous display. Now at this, she would tell each one of them to follow her around, to which they end up doing so. Now I do want to inform you that more teams were kicked off than in Kane, since Naruto didn't make that whole speech. And due to this, things were just continuing on like they usually does. As while Uncles end up doing the speech, she ends up realizing that Naruto wasn't paying attention. And as Naruto's actual eyes were on a scroll right now, as he was reading through it. Interesting, he would mutter. As he was seeing this new Tajutsu style, which, uh, <clears throat> He got the scroll from a certain place, uh, you know, he totally got it because, you know, they gave it to him. Nothing else. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. This is when Anko seeing this. She did not like the idea of being disrespected, so she sends a kunai directly at Naruto. At this, everyone who was there would watch, you know, in shock. As she did it so fast, no one was e even able to really keep up with it. However, this is when Naruto would actually catch the kunai with one hand while still looking at the scroll. At this, he ends, up, he ends up twirling the kunai at a much faster rate, as this one suddenly he would then throw it down in the ground as it nearly pierces the foot of Anko, who had, who had appeared right behind Naruto. Ooh, you're fast. But don't think that's going to help you, she would say. As she say this with a sly grin, but this is when Naruto would then continue reading through his scroll until he finally ends up speaking. 235. What? Anko would say as she looks at Naruto. That was how many openings a man right behind you could have exploited and killed you in many gruesome ways. At this, Uncle's eyes would then widen and she would then see the presence of the man right behind her with the kunai coming from his tongue. I believe you dropped this. At this, Uncle would look at this man unnerved that she didn't even sense him until he was right behind her, but she would also unnerve by Naruto. He, he knew the exact number? Was he serious? She had no idea, but something was telling her that maybe it was better off not to aggravate this kid any further. So she decides, you know, just take the kunai and walk off as Naruto would continue reading through the scroll. Annoying, he would think. So moving on, Anko would explain the rules of the forest of death. And after that, she would tell each one of them good luck and try not to die. As she would then suddenly begin to release all the teams until eventually Team 7 would then dash off. Now, of course, the team would end up walking away. This is when Naruto would actually summon out clones all around him. Naruto, what, what are you doing? Sokka would say. She looks at all the clones. At this, Naruto would then look around. Simple. We need to cover more areas and we need to get the scroll. The faster we do, the more we can get this over with. 
that this Naruto wouldn't give them a silent command to his mind, as Naruto had actually advanced the Shadow Clone Jutsu to the, war, to the point where he can just give commands to his mind to just, you know, send them, like, telling them, like, hey, go do this. So he doesn't have to openly shout at them, talking about, oh, you guys got to do this now, or something. So due to this, the clones would each nod their head, as they would then all vanish right before their eyes, using the body flicker. Sasuke would seethe in jealousy at this, as he thinks, you know, exactly, like, how strong is Naruto? Like, he just didn't understand how strong was Naruto. And as many times as he tried to figure it out, it just made no sense. The only thing that Sasuke knew and that he begrudgingly had to admit was the fact that Naruto was far beyond him. As while doing this though, Naruto would begin to sense about something. Malice, he would think. At this, Naruto begins to actually, you know, concentrate on this feeling. He will begin to sense it. Raw and raw emotions. At this, he will begin to realize it that something was approaching him at rapid speeds. Feeling this, Naruto wouldn't suddenly, you know, as, Nar as Sakura and Sasuke were preoccupied with their own things, this is when Naruto would actually end up summoning one of his, well, one of his, you know, root demonic members. Go after the snake, he would say. And this root member would nod as he would then suddenly vanish away, as it was accompanied by two others, as well as the fact that Naruto had also sent a demonic snake to go after along with them. While doing this, Naruto then turns to the others as he realized that this was far more interesting than some pointless exam. So due to this, while they were just, due to this, Naruto then turned to them as he begins to walk off. But wait, Naruto, where are you going? Sakura would say. At this, Sasuke would also look at Naruto confused as he would then say, Simple, I can't allow my clones to be the only ones to do the work, so I shall accompany them. You guys can also assist by also trying to find a team to steal their scroll. Naruto would say this logically, of course, and this, of course, made sense to Sakura and Sasuke. However, Sasuke was, of course, you know, suspicious of Naruto as well, considering the fact that, well, it's Naruto. You can't just trust that guy, bro. <laughs> so due to this, although he was reluctant, he ends up, you know, dashing off along with Sakura as they decide to find a team. However, while doing this, though, Naruto would end up creating a clone, telling it to follow them. The clone would, of course, agree to... Well, of course, agreed to do it, so it dashes off, as this is when Naruto would in turn to exactly where that eerie presence was. Now then, to more interesting matters. At this, Naruto would then suddenly be swallowed up by a dark void as he would then suddenly teleport away. As this were now turned to a different point of view. We see a mysterious someone just jump, bouncing and slithering through the trees as he was moving at a rapid speed. Just how did this happen? Orochimaru would think as he would end up seeing his appearance. Now, Orochimaru was just calmly chasing after the chakra signature of the lone Uchiha survivor that lay dormant in the Hidden Leaf Village. However, as he does so, he would then suddenly end up being attacked by some unknown force, but it was extremely powerful. At this, he also begins to see that this weird mist begins to set in the area, but here was the most creepy thing about it. No chakra was involved with that mist. At this, he wondered if this was maybe due to the fact that this was the force of death, or maybe there was something else included into it, but he had no idea. As while this was happening, he would then suddenly be attacked by extremely powerful sources of chakra, which he legit needed to, uh, le he needed to actually take it extremely serious at first glance. As while doing this, he ended up eventually, you know, fighting against these two combatants, which seemed to be Ru Ambu. This would confuse Orochimaru, however, one of the most confusing things about it was the fact that they were so strong. As normally, he would be able to deal with Root Ambus as if they were nothing, but this, this, this was different. As he would end up, as we end up turning back to the present, he would be slithering away, as one of them, as both of the Root Ambus would then suddenly blitz into hand signs, until each one of them would then release their respective attacks. One of them shooting a ginormous great fireball jutsu, while the other one shoots out a ginormous wind jutsu. At this, the two jutsus would then combine to form a ginormous flaming whirlwind that was approaching Orochimaru at top speed. Damn it, damn it, damn it, he would say. At this, Orochimaru would then suddenly be engulfed by the attack as an explosion would then be heard, which could be heard from miles and miles away. However, as he ended up turning back, we will see the smoke begin to set in as Orochimaru seemingly was done for. However, when we flash forward a little, sorry, when we move, when we, when we zoom into the area, we'll see Orochimaru, who was currently behind a tree, as he was panting. Damn it, Damn it, Rosen. I didn't know that you and Donzo was 
How are you then he would then suddenly be cut off? You're mistaken. At this, Hiroshima wouldn't stop us. He wouldn't turn around. He wouldn't see. Calmly sitting down on a tree branch, eating an apple, he would see the lone hollowed gaze of Naruto Uzumaki as he would be looking at Orochimaru. You are quite an interesting individual, aren't you? Orochimaru the snake Sani. At this, Orochimaru would begin to actually give him a smile. However, he would honestly be sweating a little bit inside. I didn't sense his presence. Who is this boy? He would think. This is when Naruto would then suddenly take a bite out of his apple. So, so then, shall we begin to discuss? He would say as he looks at Orochimaru, as the snake Sani can do nothing in the presence of this man, as he has no idea exactly what landmine he had just stumbled across. What do you guys think the encounter between Naruto and Orochimaru is going to be like? What do you guys want it to be like? Comment down below in the comment section. Thank you all so much for your support. Uh, your boy is extremely tired. It's 3 a.m. now, and honestly, I'm just trying to go to bed. Uh, thank you all so much for your support and everything, and honestly, yeah. You guys, although I'm saying it's 3 a.m. now, the, day, the time I'm uploading this video will probably be around, like, yeah, like, in 3 p.m., so, yeah, maybe, I guess it balances out. Still, though, thank you all so much for your support. I, of course, am eternally grateful. And besides that, guys, it's your host, Seiji Samurai here, and he's going to hit the hay. Thank y'all. GG's. Gotta go. And bye.